This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. For the next few days, Michelle takes over her husband's care, administering the medicated drops and keeping a close eye on his condition. We were putting the drops in, and he would take the antiviral pills, one each day. I would look at his eye every night, but at that point, there were no changes as far as I could see from the outside. Brian continues the medication, but his symptoms start to affect his daily life. It was very hard to take care of Juliana. You know, she wants to play, and I, I couldn't do that because it was, I was in a lot of pain. She definitely knew something was was up, and you could see that it, you know she wasn't as happy as she was when we we're carefree and just playing around. It was heartbreaking to me. And as Brian's health gets worse, it starts to impact the rest of the family. It was really hard to take care of both Brian and Juliana at the same time. I did feel bad about not being able to pull my own weight. I was just completely fed up. I was trying to stay positive and was having a really hard time. Then one morning, when Brian is taking his daily eye drops, he sees something frightening. I remember looking into the mirror and I noticed a white spot on my eye. It looked like someone took a Sharpie and just dotted my eye with, a, with, a, with white. I really was definitely nervous about what was going on. Keep doing your medicine, you'll be fine. But within 24 hours, Brian is horrified to see it spread. My eye was completely white. It looked like something was growing on the front part of my eye. I have never seen anything like that before. I've never even really heard of anything like that. So at that point, I, be, I got really scared about what was going on. So Michelle rushes Brian to the doctor. When the ophthalmologist saw that Brian's eye was completely white, he was taken back. He didn't understand why this happened so quickly. You can see that he was concerned. He's like, you have an, a really bad infection. But what's causing the infection remains a mystery. He really didn't say what it really could have be from. Without a clear diagnosis, Brian decides it's time to see a specialist and eventually ends up in the office of cornea expert, Dr. David Ritterband. When I first saw Brian, he had some type of infection. The eye was beet red. He was very light sensitive, and he was kind of doubled over in pain and keeping his head down. He was having symptoms for four to six weeks before he came to my office. He had been treated with antibiotics, and those hadn't worked, so we have to take a step back. Dr. Ritterband runs a thorough medical history and examines Brian's eye. Immediately, he notices something troubling. He had a, a white spot in the shape of a ring that was covering three quarters of his cornea. To investigate further, Dr. Ritterband orders a specialized test. We have some advanced tools. One is called confocal microscopy. It's an imaging technique that uses patterns of light, and it can image to a greater level than you can see with the, with the human eye just looking through a microscope. Dr. Ritterband takes detailed photographs of Brian's eye. It turns out Brian isn't infected by a bacteria or virus. There is something alive feeding on his eye. That was terrifying. It almost felt like it was a nightmare. I diagnosed Brian with acanthamoeba keratitis. I remember when he told me, I felt like my jaw hit the floor. Acanthamoeba keratitis is a rare infection caused by the single-celled parasite acanthamoeba. Inside Brian's eyeball, parasites are feeding off bacteria on the outer layer of his eye. But as this food source runs out, they start feasting on the eyeball itself, resulting in Brian's impaired vision and extreme pain. It probably causes the most severe infection in the cornea that we see. There are very few things in ophthalmology that cause as much pain, discomfort, and redness as, as this. It was gross to think something like that could, could be living in, in me. It was unreal. One of the most terrifying things about acanthamoeba is its ability to completely change its body. 
When it's active, the parasite moves across the eyeball, feeding and living off its environment. But when it's threatened, like during treatment, it can morph into a cyst with a tough, impenetrable exterior. Those cysts are very hard to kill, making acanthamoeba extremely difficult to treat. Dr. Ritterband breaks the news to Brian that this is extremely serious. It can be devastating. The worst case scenario when someone infected with acanthamoeba is you'll lose your eye. That was terrifying. It almost felt like it was a nightmare. But Dr. Ritterband has a plan to save Brian's eye by ridding it of the devastating parasites. They're very difficult to kill. You need to treat the acanthamoeba from two sides. You need to kill the growing part, and then you need to kill the cysts. In order to do this, Dr. Ritterband places Brian on an aggressive course of eye drops that need to be applied once every hour for the next 48 hours. We had to wake up and set alarms throughout the night. I had to put the drops in for him. It was very disruptive to life, but we knew we had to do it. Acanthamoeba is found worldwide in a variety of freshwater sources, like hot tubs and even tap water. Anyone who gets contaminated water in their eye is at risk of infection. But in the United States, around 85% of all cases of acanthamoeba keratitis occur in people who wear contact lenses. And Brian, who is a contact lens wearer, believes he got the parasite on a recent trip to the Cayman Islands. He admitted he was swimming in the pool, he was in the ocean, he was in a hot tub with his contact lenses. Acanthamoeba can be in any of those locations. I don't know for sure, and they don't know exactly where it came from. After a week on the powerful eye drops, Brian notices a welcome change. I could see that I could see a little better. It was becoming better. It was, it was healing. And today, Brian has made tremendous progress. Me and Juliana are back to piggyback rides, track the rides, jumping on trampoline, just playing whatever she wants to do. Well, the best part is just knowing that I'm going to be able to see Juliana and Michelle every single day. I'm extremely happy to have him back and have him help me out. We definitely realized how much we relied on each other during this experience. I don't know if I would have made it through without Michelle. She held me up. She's been my rock. That's all you can ever ask for. For contact wearers, it's very important to clean lenses with disinfecting solutions, not tap water. It's also recommended to remove contact lenses before going into bodies of water, like pools, hot tubs, and even showers. 